Newsletters don't always have to just stay with plain text. You can include a PDF attachment that includes a stunning design to a newsletter. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can use Adobe Express to take a template and create a newsletter that is customized to your brand and uses text flow, where you can have text boxes that have flowing text from one box to another. So let's get started and start creating your newsletter. To start creating your newsletter, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work with a template and we're gonna modify that to fit our brand. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to templates and we're gonna search for newsletter. There's so many amazing options here. So I'm just looking for one that kind of fits the aesthetic that we want to use for this brand. And then we're gonna recreate from that template. Now, here's a great template that I really like. And if you want to use this template in the future, click on the favorites so that it shows up under your favorite content under your stuff. So for now, we're gonna click on this and we're gonna customize a template. Now I can start making some additions to this newsletter. Now here's something that's slightly different about working with newsletters in Adobe Express. You don't see your pages up here like we normally see when we're creating carousel posts or other content. And we would normally scroll from side to side. With pages, typically in terms of a new newsletter, you're going to see them vertically. So if you wanted to add a page or view your pages, you would click under add a page here in the very bottom and you can add a custom size page or the same size page. Now we can see our pages over here on the bottom. This will actually make it easier for you to edit as you're working on this newsletter. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start making some changes and we're going to start by applying our brand. This will make it so much faster for us. Let's apply the brand by clicking on brands and I'm gonna find this brand kit that I want to use for this particular design. I wanna use it for Atreas tours. Then I'm gonna click on apply brand and I can keep on clicking until I find a combination that I really like. The great thing about this is it's gonna apply the fonts, the colors, and the styling that you've designated within that brand kit and apply this to your page. This is gonna make your content creation so much faster. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start deleting some of these elements that I know that I don't need and start replacing some of the content like the images and the text. So now I can go in and make certain modifications to each element in in the newsletter. I wanna change the fill color for this background because I actually want it to be a different color. And now I can start double clicking to change some of the text over here. One of the great things about setting up your brand kit is that you can use the fonts you designate for your design or your brand kit. I'm gonna click on the headline that I wanna use for here. And now I'm gonna go in and start double clicking on some of the areas to replace the text. Next, let's replace this image by selecting selecting it and click on replace. We have a lot of options when we click on that icon and I'm going to select libraries. Since I have a library for this particular brand that has all the images that I wanna use, that is what I'm gonna look for. And once I click on that, I have all my stock photos that I can implement and add to this header. I also added another image that is coming from the CEO. So this is like a nice little photo that we use. And what I ended up doing was once I added the image, I used the circle crop so that we had this nice shape over here. Next, I'm gonna add some more of the text here where it's that welcome page for the newsletter. Let's double click on the section and I'm going to paste my text. Now I'm going to start adding some more elements so that it's a lot easier to see. So I've added more text. I added an upcoming event because that was one of the first things we wanted to have on the first page of the newsletter. And then I just clicked on each element defined what header I wanted to use for the text and what I wanted to use for the body text. So I defined all of those that were inside the brand kit. After I added the text, then I went ahead and added a shape and I gave it a little bit of a corner radius. That way it looks a little bit soft and engaging. Next, what I wanna do is I want to add one of the seals that I created like the original design and a pattern just so that it 
feels more aligned with the brand. So I'm going to go over to my brand kit by clicking on brands. I'm going to find that brand that I'm using and I'm going to scroll all the way down to my assets. I'm going to click on the assets that I want to include. So this is going to be one of the seals. It adds it to my design over here. And I also want to use one of the patterns. Now I'm going to size this pattern so that it fits a larger dimension. And I'm just going to drag this. And what's nice is that Adobe Express already sizes it for me as I am extending the image. And now what I'll do is I'll go to elements, add another shape so that I can add it behind this pattern. That way the pattern is visible and I'm going to adjust it to fit that size. Then I'm going to go to my layers tool in the far right. If you don't see your layers, you can enable it like this and drag this right behind that pattern so that it's visible. Then I'm going to resize this seal over here so that it fits on top of this little sidebar that we're doing. So I finished modifying the first page from my newsletter and now I have my little sidebar. I have my upcoming events. I added the issue and the website. Now let's work on the second page. Here is what our end result will look like so that you can see what we'll end up with once we finish with the design. The best way to do this is I am going to just duplicate this first page so that I don't have to reapply a lot of these design elements. I'm going to show my pages and then duplicate it. To do that, I'm going to click on this icon and then click on duplicate. Now I can go to the next page and I see that this is already duplicated and I can start modifying some of these elements. So I already know I want to have that white background because we're going to have a lot of text. So I'm going to go in and change the background color and remove that background image that I had initially. Then I'm going to start removing some of these elements over here, changing the text color and just deleting it to the bare bones because what I'm going to start doing is pasting new information. And this is where it gets so exciting because when you have a lot of paragraphs inside Adobe Express, normally what you do is you would add another paragraph, copy paste it. And if you adjusted your text, it wouldn't really connect to the next paragraph. You have to do this manually. But now with text flow, we can make it to where our text will flow from one page to another. Let me show you what I mean. We're going to start working on the second page now, and I'm showing you the final result. One of the greatest things about the latest additions to Adobe Express is that now we have text flow. So if you have several paragraphs, this is going to be a game changer because now I can drag the flow of my text and I don't have to use multiple text blocks for my content. So if you're an InDesign user like myself, this is a little peek of what InDesign's power can be inside Adobe Express without the complexity of the tool for InDesign. So if you don't use this, this is going to be really powerful to use in Adobe Express because it's fairly easy. So let's start modifying this page so that we can end with this result. Now, what I ended up doing was taking my very first page that was already designed to how I wanted and had some standards there and duplicated that page. To duplicate your page, you're going to click on the pages down on the bottom. So if you're not seeing the pages, click on show pages and click on the three dots. Then click on duplicate and it's going to duplicate that page. Then what I ended up doing is now we see here that this is my duplicated page. I started deleting elements from my page that I knew I didn't want on the second page. And I ended up with something like this. Now I'm going to start adjusting and moving some of these elements over here until I kind of rearrange them in an area where I want to have them. And now I'm going to start pasting some of my text into the second page. So I already had some text that I had already pre-written and I just pasted this into my page. Now you can always go in and modify what font styling you want from your brand kit, but it already designated it for me. Now I'm going to paste the rest of my text. Now I have my text placed in and of course it does not look how I want it to look like. So we're going to make a few tweaks. I want to make sure that my text is aligned to the left. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that this text falls under two text boxes and not one. So to do that, we're going to enable text flow, select your text box, click on text flow. And then what we're going to do is you can click on the plus icon to add a new text box so that it flows into that next area. And as you can see, it added a new 
new text box that was the same exact size as the original. And as I drag this over, it's going to start bringing in the content to the next box. So this is already so exciting. Now, the next thing to do is I'm going to select each individual area here and add specific styling for my headers and my subheaders. And I'm going to increase the size of certain sections so that way it stands out and it helps improve the reading flow. So I want to have my header over here. I can go in and change the fill colors. Then even my intro text over here can be a little bit larger. You just want to make sure that as you apply this, it's consistent throughout your text. Then I also want to bold the benefits and let's make these bullet points. Now I can go in and make more adjustments for this is looking really great now. What I want to do is replicate that same process for each headline and each step. What's important here is that you make sure you duplicate everything that you've created from your initial styling. So then go in and select each individual area to modify that so that it's consistent. Now everything is looking a lot more polished. I've added my headline. I've added the September issue, which was from the initial part of my newsletter. I replaced the image here. I added some practical exploring tips and now I've arranged most of my text, but I want to add a few more elements. The last thing I want to do is add a torn paper effect. So in my other files or designs that I've created for this brand, we have this torn paper effect. Now, one of the things that you can't necessarily do right now when you are working with pages in terms of a newsletter style is that you can't really add these pages or designs into your current design as you would normally do with others. What you would need to do is either open this in a new page or in a new browser. So click on edit in new window and then you can copy paste that into this new design. So I'm going to go in and search for the bottom area. I'm going to just copy it and you can always right click to copy and then go back over here and paste it. Make sure you're clicking on the page and now it's pasted that same exact design element. If you want to use this torn paper effect and now what I'm doing is I'm just dragging this to the bottom so that this is more towards the background. Now if you want to use this torn paper effect like I did and you don't necessarily know where this is, I did find this from another template, is that you can click on this image and go over here. So I have the image selected for the torn paper, go to the far upper left here where it says image, click on more and then click on source info. It's going to tell you the Adobe stock license number, but it's also going to tell you the name of the file. So what I tend to do is either try to paste the stock number. It doesn't always work, but you can also grab the title and then go into media, paste that name search for it and now you'll find the original image or icon that you can use and then you can go in and modify it. What I ended up doing so that it looked like this was that I changed the effect to a duotone, a custom duotone effect based on the brand. So you can go in and modify the colors by clicking on the image and customizing them. So you can go in here and customize those colors so that it kind of fits your brand. Now I'm going to bring some of my text a little bit higher up up so that this area over here fits. And I want to now add a cutout so that it just has a really nice visual flow of someone kind of looking forward, but it also acts as if they're looking at the content. So I'm going to go back and go under media, search for photos, and I can search for hiking. And once I found my photo, I added it over here to my design and I removed the background. Now I placed it over here on the side so that it's really working great with the visual flow. And this is how we can create the newsletter. Now the last step is to export it as a PDF. So let's do that. So to export the pages, you want to make sure you go to your pages and go over to view all pages. I have several working pieces here while I was building this newsletter. So I want to make sure that I'm only exporting the first and second page, which are my final pieces. I have them both selected. Now I'm going to click on download and I'm going to download a PDF format. If you end up using crop marks or show bleed or have bleed marks, this is where you can enable them. And you can also download them as individual PDF files. Then just click on download. It's going to give you this prompt. And now you'll have your final PDF that you can share on an email or on your website. ¿Te gustó este video? Did you like this video? 
well, make sure that you hit the little campanita, the little bell, and subscribe so that way you can stay connected for the next time that I post a new video. And of course, please share this with anyone that might find this valuable.